So I think we're going to do a whack-a-mole. We have uh, Jack. Jack, tell me your channel name. Straight Talk with Jack. And are you primary jazz? Primarily. I, I am. And then there's Harry Houdini. Harry's... Harry's music room. Music room. I know that because we're we're literally in Harry's music room, and it's like a 360 tour. <laughs> Look at this. I could go around in circles. We're gonna do whack a mole eventually, but I just oh, God, you left your record out. You left your intervention. I just got that history. copy of the Flying Burrito Brothers. It's a very good copy. Very good. It is. I'll surprise Amazon had it. Nobody else did. Oh really? Oh yeah, because he tries to repress those, but. You got Beatles shit, you got... Now that's probably a bootleg oh, yeah. of the Jim Marshall photograph. So if he was alive, he'd sue your ass. He would, he would. I knew Jim. <laughs> and then of course, you know that picture's from? A uh, Magical Mystery Tour? No, it's for, it's for the release party Yo, in somewhere. Brian Epstein's apartment for Sgt. Pepper. Okay. And there's a dog, there's a dog here. We're not gonna show the dog. This is, is this Ringo's actual drum set? Yeah, no. and Ringo gave, actually that's an autograph Ringo picture right there. You look like sort of, holding the dog like that, you look like one of the Gabor sisters. Uh. Jaja Gabor or- This is Rosie. Ava Gabor. <laughs> and you got, okay, we got guitar chords. I'm just, do you mind? Uh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm doing a room tour on your behalf. I know okay. you've done them. Uh, you, like me, bought that silly Egyptian St Egypt Station Paul McCartney case. I hate that thing. You got the mono box. You got a, okay, a BC-13. You got the MoFi box, which sounds crappy, but it's collectible. I have one too. You got Queen box. You got, you got a lot of shit in here, but it looks great. There's a lot, a lot of stuff. You pack it in nicely, and you got a Moran's. <clears throat> Okay, this was pretty good. Okay, we'll do a whack-a-mole in a little this. while. And look at this. This is, I have the 1975 Newsweek, and Mazzy was nice enough to give me the time that came out the yeah. same week. He asked me if I had it, and I said, I'll, I think I, I do it. I'll give you a copy. And of course, on the way here, I looked in eBay, and it's $150 on eBay now. But I am a generous man. I try to be. And so it should it should be in your collection rather than mine. Well, I I appreciate it very much. Yes. Oh, and there's the uh, famous Maxell. Yeah. JBL 100. And that's probably a bootleg. So yes. photographer, you you fucked that photographer I did. too. I did. Okay, you're fucking a lot of photographers. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack and I are in the photo business, so we know when well, photogra you, photographers get shafted. You'll never leave here alive. No. <laughs> All right. We'll stop okay, so I'm going to do a whack-a-mole here. This is, I don't know what number this is, whack-a-mole 152 or 53. And this is at in Harry's Music Room. I don't do a lot of whack-a-moles at other people's houses, so I can't guarantee that. There's Harry. Jack's sitting on the sofa. He's, Say hi, Jack. He, hi, Jack. Hi, hi, yeah, don't, yeah. Get don't out of line. Yeah, well. you don't say that in the airport. So these are old man jokes here. So uh, Mazzy's whack-a-mole... On location in, is it Puyallup? Puyallup. Puyallup, like, you know. Did I ever tell you this story? And this will only be a joke for people who live in the, in the Northwest. I was in uh, a QFC grocery store in the sandwich section where they have boar's head meats and cheeses. And they have these sandwiches you can, you know, pre-made and you can order. And one, I pointed it when I first moved here. And I said, I'm going to have the Samamich. And the woman had an accent. I won't mock accents. And I kept, and she goes, what? I said, I want the Samamich. She said, which one? I said, the Samamich. She kept, which one? It turned out it was the Samamich. <laughs> and it, and it's, an, it's an area up here in the Pacific Northwest called Samamich. And, I, tried. And, and she thought I was saying, which sandwich? Nobody's laughing okay. out there. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, five random whack-a-moles. Now this, I'm going to do his rock wall. So, okay, I'll pick five. Oh, I don't want to, okay. Let me just, I don't want to trip here. I don't, do you have a um, liability insurance? You have to, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, you're not supposed to be looking, are you? Three, I can hold them. Okay. I'm, I'm a professional, I do this for a living. <laughs> Four? Not his first whack-a-mole. That's no, not. <laughs> Five. Okay. 
Oh shit. <laughs> okay. Okay, well this this first one's easy. This is Bruce Springsteen's live in Dublin. Uh, this is the follow-up to the Seeger sessions. Uh, I don't remember what year it was, but um, Bruce Springsteen did a great um, uh, sort of tribute record to the music uh, of Pete Seeger, songs he wrote, songs he made famous. Uh, great, great uh, music. There's a live video of this, and I'm sure you have the DVD or Blu-ray of it, right? Oh, absolutely. Of course he does. That's a great it's, album, and it's by a the way. it's a great album, and it's a great live album. And the and the band he works with, I don't even know who they are. They're all session players out of uh, New York City, mostly. There you go. Okay, see, I have help this time. But this is a fantastic album, live in Dublin. From is this like 2002 or three? Mm. 2007. Okay, I saw I'm wrong. Two Two shows on 2007. That so, uh, great album, Bruce Springsteen. Okay, this is a uh, Moonflower. Uh, this is a Santana record from, I believe, 1977 or 78. Am I right there? Um, 77. See, I know my Very shit. Very good. Very good. Uh, Carlos Santana, obviously, Mission District, San Francisco. This is the later period. He went through a lot of different singers. Um, right around this time, he did that song. I'm dead and what, what's that song? Is this a, this is a live record too, isn't it? Um, I I don't know. That's this this is a double album, and I I thought this was live. I could be wrong. Someone tell you me. You know more about that record than I do. Yeah. Um. Oh, Pete Escovito plays with him, the Latin artist, which which is Pete Escovito is Sheila E. Sheila Escovito's father. Um, I think this is a live record, right? And also related to Alejandro Escovedo. Yeah, this is a live record. I was right. See, you put Very it good. away. Yeah. I'm going to have him put it away. Okay, <laughs> so I'm doing pretty good. Okay, uh, this is uh, the expanded LP edition of Coda, Led Zeppelin. Not my favorite record. This is the one with sort I don't of... I think it's anybody's favorite. Yeah, this is the leftover stuff, right? Kind well, of? Vance. Vance might like it. Yeah, yeah, Vance. If you're watching Vance, you like this. Coda, uh, I did see... See, this is where I pivot. This is the key. If I don't know what to say about the record and the music, you pivot. Saw Led Zeppelin three times, once at Keysar in Golden Gate Park, and I saw uh, the last two shows they ever played in America, the one where at the Open Coliseum, Day on the Green, where Bill Graham and uh, uh, what's the guy, uh, the manager of um, uh, Led Zeppelin, big fight backstage. Peter, Peter Grant. Peter Grant, big fight with them. And uh, of course, a few days later, or a week later, Robert Plant's son would die, and they never came back to America. They cut the tour short, as I recall. So, Coda, there we go. That, okay. Um, we got two more. Oh, God. I'm. I'm I... <laughs> that was not planted, by the way. I, this was not planted. 2400, <laughs> 2400 Fulton Street, which is literally maybe three, 2,000 feet from where I was born, on the corner. It's on uh, right off of um, uh, Stanger Street on Fulton right the corner of literally the cor corner of Golden Gate Park uh they their manager uh Thompson what's his not Bruce Thompson forgot his name who managed the uh the airplane wanted thought they should invest bought this mansion for something like $260,000 which was a lot then maybe even less and it was their uh, mansion their recording studio down in the basement uh, this is the comp way after they split up. This is a really a comp. A lot of notes on here by Ben Fong Torres, who uh, went to San Francisco State, my alma mater, and became one of the first editors at Rolling Stone with Ian Winner and a good Ralph, album if, Ralph Jacob. If you don't have any, if you don't have any, this is is a really good album. That's twenty four hundred Fulton. That's the house. Uh, the people that bought it. It's a couple that I know. Paul Curtin and his wife. He's a um, art director and designer with in advertising. I used to work with. And his wife is an interior designer. They bought this from the airplane, uh, a, a airplane family, I guess, the whole the business. And they painted it white. So now it's painted white. And the street behind it, McAllister Street, I lived for uh, seven years at an apartment back there. So I used to hear uh, the bands. Uh, at this point, um, when I lived there, it was um, Jefferson Starship and Hot Tuna would practice downstairs in the basement. I did go to a party here when... Uh, 30 seconds over Winterland came out and we all got Winterland uh, 30 second toaster tank top t-shirts that were on the cover uh, tank tops and I hate I never wear tank tops so um it's probably rare now anyway this is a good comp good comp now lastly oh fuck oh no at first I thought it said Billy Joel's greatest 
I swear to God, I, like, it'd be easy, it, you know, if, if this said Billy Joel, I'd be able to talk about it. I don't know who, oh, Billy Joel Royal. Down in the Boondocks. Oh, okay, this is an, that's the old Down in the Boondocks. And I think he did uh, Town Without the... Pity, didn't he? No, no that's that Gene Pitney. Pitney. Gene Pitney. You know, I, this is where I finally got stumped. I don't know anything to say about Billy Joel Royal. So, Jack, I, you I, know anything about Billy Joel Royal? Zero. Okay. He'll save the last dance for me, but he didn't do the original that, did he? No. No, no, no. Anyway, on this Columbia, this is a 70s pressing. Uh, I don't know anything about this, and this is a promo copy. Of course, who would buy this record? Let's see, what are the other no. songs on this? Actually, it's probably a good record. Why do you have this record? I knew you when, because I like uh, Down in the Boondocks. That is a good song. Is that the original? Uh, yeah. Cherry Hill Park. Okay. Who yeah. wrote that? Oh, it's a it's a Jay South. It's um. Joe South song. Joe South. Joe Which South. Which one? Which one? Uh, Down in the Boondock. Oh, Joe, Joe South. South. Okay, now I'm pivoting again. Joe South wrote the song Hush. And the first version of Hush that I heard was on the very first Deep Purple album. The best version, too, by best the way. Best version. And it's and it has that Beatle like thing in the middle. Da 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 kind of like Day in the Life, the middle part. And it's on the label that was partly owned by Bill Cosby. It was on not Tetragamaton? Yeah, Te yeah. Tetragamaton. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. See? Do you wanna do a whack now? Do you I'll try. Yeah, I'll try. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'll just do them one at a time. Oh, well, well, of course we've got, which I haven't opened yet because I bought two copies by mistake. I hate people that don't open records. <laughs> no, I haven't opened one. Well, what, <laughs> why don't you tell people what that record is? Well, this is iRobot. Oh, look, I, I have two. Okay. There we go. All right, who, who? Mobile Fidelity, which is probably Michael 45's favorite label. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and I love this. You're so passive-aggressive. iRobot. This is not iRobot. This is I in the Sky. See, you even got it wrong. <laughs> you got me flustered. whack are hard. <laughs> I in the Sky. Not nearly as good as iRobot, but it's okay. It's who, okay. Who, who is the artist? Alan Parsons Project. And who's Alan Parsons? Alan Parsons was the engineer at the Abbey Road, worked on Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, worked on some of the Beatle albums. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, look at the camera. Let's see. What else can we get? Let's go low. Do you want to do one, Jack? When he goes high, I go low. Okay, we will switch to the jazz wall. Okay. Okay. Oh. This is a band that would be better off for uh, Mazzy to talk about. But the Young Bloods, uh, with uh, <clears throat> somebody named uh, Young Blood, <laughs> apparently. What do you know about okay, this? Okay. I, let's I just, okay. I let's just get know professional. The song get together. Let's get professional in here. Okay. <laughs> the song "Get Together" is an anthem for our generation, right? Come on, people, now smile on your brother. Everybody, yes. get together. Now, is there any truth that a judge made him write that? He did not. Okay. The lead singer is Jesse Colin Young, and Banana is in here. Um, uh, anyway, this is when the band was in New York City, RCA Records. They actually would move to the West Coast to around Olima, Point Reyes area, Marin County. Um, but the song, Get Together, which is this amazing anthem, was written by Chet... Which I do at open mic, by the way. Chet Powers wrote it, and Chet Powers, his real name, or that was his real name, I always forget which is which, is Dino Valenti. And Dino Valenti would join Quicksilver Messenger Service. Uh, the first album is a song called Dino's Song, written about Dino. He was in the band, and he was... He went to jail for drug possession, went to prison I'm for sure. a few years before uh, the first couple of Quicksilver Messenger albums came out. So he's not on the first three. Quicksilver gets out, he joins Quicksilver. Of course, they get their biggest hit, have another hit of Fresh Air. But they added all this drench reverb. I don't like that Quicksilver but as good I, as the first the album. The story I heard about Get Together is that a judge told him you can either go to jail or you can write a song that's positive for your generation. Well, that would have been Chet Powers. Right, right. Okay, that could be. I did not know that. Um, but but there's, they did a little kind of rootsy country rock, not unlike The Love and Spoonful of the time. This is from 1967. Of course, every soundtrack of the 60s has a version of Get Together on it. C.C. Uh, Ryder, a cover of that is on here. Um, this is a great record. This is their first record. I like their Warner. They switched to Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers gave them this sweetheart deal, and they got a sub label. All these labels were given bands sub labels. Yeah. Uh, Raccoon Records was okay. their sub sub label. 
Jack, you want to pull, we're gonna, just pull one that ran. We're going to move, there. here, I'm going to move the camera so we don't stop the footage here. Anywhere in particular. You can't look, though. You just have to reach in and pull. Where, where's your jack? Jack starts here and goes across. Okay, let me, let me, one second, one second. Let me just, oh, oh, look. see, we want to keep this. I'll pull one out of here. Okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull down. This is a, is this Lena Horn? No, you know what? This is a this is a really good record. Um, That's what I. What's really good one. about this, if I remember right, Marty Page did the. Yeah, Sh show Marty it to Page, the audience. Show it to the Marty audience. Marty Page did the arranging on here. Anything that Marty Page does is usually usually pretty good. Um, it's an old RCA, and uh, they don't list the sidemen on here, but it's a it's a West Coast band. This is redone on Sony, I see, and I don't have this. And damn it, now I'm gonna have to buy this. Oh, that's speak, speaker's <laughs> corner that reissue, which is yeah. probably pretty good. It's probably very good. Yeah, 1960, 1960. Beautiful cover, right? But folks, anything uh, that Marty Page does, it's gonna be a winner. It's yeah. gonna be a winner. Great tunes. She's a good singer. Want to pick one more? I'll pick one. Let's more. just try. Let's just. Yeah. Lena, I'm gonna pull one for you. Do that. Oh, this is like the double fist is. This, um... this is whack a whack a mole. <laughs> Two whacks. Thelonious Monk. Thelonious Monk is he's going to be good if he ever gets his act together. <laughs> um, I have Ellington, Parker, and Armstrong as my three geniuses. Monk is a very, very close fourth, what he did for music. And I think you all know that, so I'm not going to spend time doing this. Um, you can find these two in really twofers. good condition. This is a twofer. They're around. Where's Rob? This 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 is a this I could tell is this is Harry's uh, sleeve here is almost mint, and usually when they're mint, the records are usually mint. Um, this is a this is a great thing. This is all the Riverside. Am I right? Yep, Riverside trios. That probably is about a seventy four seventy five issue. Um, yeah, maybe earlier than that. I mean, the, this issue, not the recording. Yeah, I said it's mid to late seventies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what a great! I don't know where you got this, Harry, but I don't either. But uh, you probably stole it, like you say, you stole records from but, the back yeah. of the day. Yeah. There's another Blue Note compilation of Monk stuff, and this these twofers. Uh, that you can find in Mingus has them, Cannibal. I, all the folks who record on Riverside, they're around if you can find them, and they're good. This is a great record. Yeah, I like the Loneliest um, Monk. Well, you know, Oscar Pettifer is based, and of course, Blakey is on one, and Kenny Clark's on the other. So, Kenny Clark was the one that he and Dizzy, they claim, not Bird, even though Bird did, but Kenny Clark was a real form of years of bebop so that's a great great record my favorite songs uh by monk uh i am a believer and last train to clarksville <laughs> so okay anyhow so, what an honor to be with these uh and taj mahal doing take a giant step let's do um i guess let's let's just do one more here harry on this let I'm me gonna, pull for you okay you pull for me this is handheld oh man this is like handoff well, like I okay, okay you, oh you're a you're a photographer yeah i can hold the camera of course you're getting the I ceiling, get, though, so I you got to pay attention. I get, oh, I get oh, cheese for holding. <laughs> no dice. 1970 Bad Finger. No matter what. Um, look at this cover. It's a Bad Finger on that cover. And John Lennon suggested the name Bad Finger. Yeah, they were they called were the, the Ivies. They were Ivies. Who's doing this whack? You whacked. I'm mulling it. Okay. <laughs> this is on Apple Records, of course. Um, this, I think the songs are... Did Todd Rogan produce the part of this record? Oh, Jeff... Oh, Jeff Emmerich produced this one. Of course, Jeff Emmerich was the engineer who came in on uh, re a revolver for the Beatles. They had re one record by... Did Todd Rogan produce one of their records? Am I, he, I think he did. Am I misremembering that? I, I he thought did. he did. Uh, Mal Evans even supposedly produced a song. George Harrison produced a couple of singles. Uh, not on this record. Oh, this is a little... Any Beatle folks out there, the, the photo photographs in here... Photographs are by Richard DeLello. Richard DeLello wrote, wrote a great book on the Beatles called um, Last Cocktail Last, to Last Cocktail Party, oh, yeah. about the demise. A great story about demise of a record label and a record business. It's a great book. Um, it should be repressed, I think, or reprinted. Um, but no matter what's a great song on here, uh, Bloodwind, Better Days. Yeah, but, oh, with... 
The original version of Without You was out here. Pete Ham, I believe, wrote Without You, and that became one of the biggest hits for Harry Nielsen. And the irony is Harry Nielsen's two big, great songwriter Harry Nielsen was, but his two biggest songs he didn't write. Fred Neal's Everybody's Talking, used in Midnight Cowboy, and Without You, he won a Grammy for uh, from this album. Uh, I think he did the definitive version of it, but this is a good version. But this is my favorite Badfinger album. That is a good record. That's the first. <laughs> this is. This from, is. Yeah. Pop, what is this? What's this has got a bonus album with it. Bonus two tracks. Is this a bootleg? No, that's an official UK with a bonus. Uh, I don't have this, and I've never seen the Gatefold version. Is this from like the CD era when they added? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I never saw this. Okay. If you saw Magic Christian, that's the uh, movie based on the, is it Terry, Terry Southern? Southern? Terry Southern book. Um, also did Candy, didn't he? Candy. The ring goes in with Peter Sellers. Very funny movie. A bunch of uh, guys from Monty Python. Is it? John Cleese is in it. And um, there's a cameo of Yul Brenner when he's singing about the girl when he's got, he's doing it in drag in the bar in the, on the, and he takes the wig off at the end and it's uh, Yul Brenner. So anything else? Any last minute things? Uh, I'm just honored to hold a phone. I, I, I can say I, I held Mazda's phone. The for, problem is, for see, you know, this, okay, this is maybe a photographer. Photographers would realize this. Whenever I'm with for, uh, people and I'm, we want to take like a selfie of a bunch of us or we're somewhere because <laughs> we just had dinner, we want to take a picture. Someone always comes up, oh, do you want me to take a picture of you all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always say, no, because if you snap that shutter, you own the copyright. That's correct. You know, and you know that, except That's being correct. a photographer. So. That's the correct All right, thing. so I guess Mazzy loves you. Thanks for doing a whack-a-mole here at Harry's Music Room. Yeah. In Puyallup. Puyallup, yeah. Puyallup Washington. What does Puyallup mean? In it's the Indian tribe. It's Indian oh, it's tribe for records. So can we gamble here? You can gamble at the Emerald Queen I think Casino. we are gambling. That's huge, motherfucker. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. All Music, right. here's your phone back. Thank you very what much. What an honor. Well, this can't be good.